Hi, my name is Katarina Dutiano Weiss. I'm a professor of reasoning and argumentation at the VU Amsterdam. So you know those little kids are like, but why? Why is it like this? And then you answer the question and then uh, they're still not happy. They still want to know more and more why, why, why. These people are actually already philosophers. Hi, my name is uh, Anastasia and I'm a third year Bachelor of Philosophy uh, student. I would say that anyone who has this tendency to ask the bigger questions and to keep digging at an answer, to keep asking themselves, okay, but why does this happen or how does this happen or for what reason, uh, will find a good place uh, in studying philosophy. I'm Pedro, I'm uh, 21 years old. Uh, and I'm doing my first year's bachelor uh, for philosophy. Uh, in my eyes, philosophy really expanded my mind. It uh, opened it to new uh, ways of thinking uh, and of viewing things from many different perspectives that, uh, that could be beneficial in many areas in life. I am Carlo Yerna and I teach the course in modern philosophy. So if I would have to name uh, a team that keeps coming up in the history of philosophy, maybe unity uh, is a central topic, the unity between mind and body in one human being, or the unity of humans together in society, or the unity of the sciences. Philosophy really is where all the disciplines meet. So when you're a philosopher, you can be interested in anything. So if you are the kind of person, as I am, who's curious about everything, and you don't want to limit your range of interests, then philosophy is really the place for you. Many philosophers that I heard, watched videos or read about, uh, were able to put feelings or thoughts that I had into words that were understandable for me. So I would feel certain things or uh, think certain things about life that I wouldn't really know how to explain or how to formulate properly, but I would read them and I would be like, okay, I, I understand what he means and I can relate to that. It's a wonderful combination of, on the one hand, a really comprehensive history of philosophy. So you're, you get the background and you get the understanding of how the history of thought developed. And on the other hand, it combines it with specific subjects in different disciplines in philosophy, such as epistemology and metaphysics and ethics. A scientific philosophy, often the whole point of science is precisely to show that things that seem natural, obvious to us, around us, are actually not exactly as they seem to us. Whereas common sense philosophy focuses more on the idea that the way we perceive the world around us is pretty much the way reality really is. So it's interesting that the students then get exposed to different ways of thinking about what philosophy is all about. I'm going to give you a brief presentation on my thesis topic, uh, the title of which is An Invitation to Interpretation, uh, Radical Hermeneutics, Practical, Practical Theology, and the Role of Frenesis. Professors and the faculty at the FU Amsterdam have really made impressive commitments to bringing in authors with different cultural backgrounds from different parts of the world. Uh, and that has really given me like a better comprehensive understanding and a more a wider range of the thinkers that I've covered in my degree than I would have otherwise. I try to include also voices that have been excluded previously, like Anton Wilhelm Amo, the first black African philosopher in Europe, or Emilie du Châtelet, a female philosopher. We were introduced to the entire uh, free will debate. I really liked it. It was really interesting uh, to see all the different uh, views that you can have on free will. Uh, some people believe that everything is predetermined based on your actions. That, like me sitting here right now, is going to affect my entire day differently than actually me choosing what to do during the day. One of the authors we read is uh, Susan Stebbing, who was a very influential philosopher in the first half of the 20th century in England. The text that we read by her is on propaganda, uh, which was written in the 30s somewhere, and yet when we read it, we immediately, all the students immediately connected to current discussions on political discourse that play out in this day. Yeah. Amsterdam, first off, is a good city to study in, I believe. Uh, my experience of this university has been that I've met a lot of great people, a lot of good people, and that I've enjoyed my time with them a lot.